Wait till you see what I'm building. Okay, so what am I actually doing? Remember when I built the 2,000 gallon aquarium? Uh, there you go. Don't mind my mess. I'm working. Uh, you'll remember that we ended up painting the outside concrete black. Now I mentioned that this was only supposed to be temporary and eventually I'd like to cover it in some way. Remember when I used to build 3D backgrounds or when I showed you how to build 3D backgrounds? I've shown you a multitude of different ways from building out a styrofoam and fiberglass, just for example. I thought, why can't we do that for the outside of an aquarium? Maybe frame one, maybe cover a stand in it, just give it something more unique. Then I thought, why don't we do it for the 2000? So, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I started out by running out and grabbing a few sheets of this one and a half inch thick styrofoam. Now, this isn't usually the type I would use. This actually has a, uh, almost like a foil back cover, as you can see here. This is just for insulative purposes, but it's the thickest I could have that I could find that was in stock in my little town. I'm also just going to silicone this directly to the cement, which means if we ever change our mind down the future, we can easily remove it. And using this tape on the back here is actually going to prove to be a pretty useful tool when siliconing. Silicone's gonna stick to this easier than it's gonna stick to uh, styrofoam, believe it or not. The problem with this is that it's gonna take a while. So here's how this is going to work. I'm gonna take a construction adhesive. I'm going to silicone essentially pretty much what this is, silicone the styrofoam sheets that I've already cut out to the dimensions of the tank, which basically I'm just covering the major areas for now, which believe it or not, is not a lot. In fact, once the tank is covered, I still have a ton of scrap left over, plans for this as well. Once the main pieces are in place, I'm gonna take some scrap and build up in some locations, mostly around the base of the aquarium because I'm gonna carve this into a rock type look, I think and the rocks in the bottom will almost look like they're piled up there. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Oh, and to fill up any cracks and to make it more uh, uniform, we'll spray in all of that with some sp expanding spray foam, which we can paint and carve later as well. Once we get all of that on, I've got to wait like 24 hours to 48 hours. We're gonna be using a lot of silicone and I wanna make sure that everything is cured before we start carving it. Now I could carve it in advance, but I want to get it all in place and get an overall look uh, and feel. I don't know if I want to do some bigger rocks or smaller rocks or, or what I'll end up doing. But once I do get it carved out and most of that tape removed, I'll be removing that as I carve it type of deal because it's actually pretty annoying. We move on to paint. I'm going to be using Plasti Dip to paint it. This is important to use on this styrofoam simply because of a number of reasons. One. Uh, it's okay to get it wet, so if any water ever gets out and gets it wet, don't worry about it. Two, it's not going to eat away at the styrofoam. Finally, three, it'll stick to anything. We're going to be using three main colors, black, gray, and a bit of beige. The most common colors of rocks, and we'll blend it in. Most likely doing a base coat in black and all the crevices in black. Then we'll follow it up with uh, a coat of gray, uh, more sparingly, and then finally, we'll do like little touch work with the beige or something along those lines. But that is the game plan. But let's get started. I, I really got to get moving. Now I'm using a Gorilla adhesive because it's supposed to be pretty strong. Plus it sets in about 30 minutes. I'll be relatively generous with this, but I don't have to go nuts with it. This is, uh, believe it or not, going to be more than enough. It's, it's styrofoam. It's not heavy. And uh, since it's on the outside of the aquarium, I don't really worry about it too much. Good thing about this is the uh, tank is four feet tall and the sheets are eight by four. So there was next to no cutting needed. But I did use my table saw just because it was gonna be really quick and I could just zip right through them. I'm pretty excited. This is gonna be super simple. I just wanna make sure it's pushed in there. I'm not worried about it lining up perfectly. I can fill in gaps later. I can trim it down a little bit, etc. No problem. I do want them to overlap though, because if I just met corner to corner, I'd have this big gap in the center. I want it to overlap, so uh, the side. Now again, I'm not looking for full coverage, only looking to get the main sections done. I'm also only doing visible areas. 
Nobody looks behind the tank. I'm not bothering with it. There's no point. You know what? I bet you I could just add a dab of this silicone and that would be more than enough. Obviously, this side's a little too long. I'll go ahead and cut that off here in a second. Really, you just need to score it. Put some pressure on the other side. Oh, I should also mention, before we add the paint and after it's all carved, I'm going to take my heat gun over it all just to smooth it out. The heat gun will slowly start to melt it, but it also hardens the surface, making it even more resistant. Now, ideally, I should probably use some clamps to hold this all together just until it cures. But again, this is a fast curing adhesive, says that it holds within 30 minutes. So I'm going to take it at, the, uh, take it at face value and hope that it does. Uh, however, being so light and using a generous amount, I'm guessing I'm not going to have any problems. Worst case scenario, we don't like how this turns out. I rip it off, give it another coat of black paint. I'm not worried about this at all. If I don't like it, I don't like it. It's going to be that simple. This is going to look amazing. I can't believe how fast this is too. Run out of silicone right at the very lip here. Doesn't matter, it's the base. I think I'm gonna be overlapping all of this anyways with some pieces that kind of crop out a little bit. Heck, this is one and a half inch. We might come out five, six inches with some rocks that are kind of falling down. Depends on how much we have left. And if we really like it, guess what's gonna get done next? The pond. Anybody that's ever worked with silicone before, what I was worried about is uh, I'm gonna start adding these on, they're gonna start sliding around, and I have to go get my clamps. This is easier than I thought it was gonna be. Are you even recording? Holy sh! I, th I, don't, I thought I didn't even record a single thing. So we are about one tube of silicone in. I've got four tubes, so more than enough silicone. I always keep my receipts, by the way. A lot of the times I always buy more than I'm actually going to require, but to be honest with you, I'd rather have too much then not enough. And like I said, I keep my receipts, so the rest goes back. This is coming out pretty good. I like it. I will have to fill in some gaps and whatnot. Man, this is pretty good. I really like it. I know how horrible and weird this looks. Because <laughs> it does. Oh, I'm turning my aquarium into a spaceship. Look at it. <laughs> it looks like a spaceship now. <laughs> I still love it. And it's going to look amazing when I'm done. I don't think I cut enough pieces up, but we're pretty darn close, so not too worried about it. We'll use some spray foam in this area here, but that's exactly what I got it for to fill in the voids, make it look a little better. Just going to make sure it's all in there. I see that I've cut this too short. Bit of a miscut. I'll have to go cut a strip to go right there, and I forgot to get a strip for here. No big deal. All right, so there are the main sections of the aquarium kind of covered. I know it's not perfect. There's a ton of gaps and whatnot. Uh, but we just get, need to get the main sections covered. We have an inch and a half to carve up and to make look pretty good. Of course, this stuff comes off pretty easy, but uh, likes to come off in strips and like sort of like that. So. I figured, you know what, I'm just going to take it off as I carve it, and uh, it holds paint as well, so no problems there. Next thing I kind of want to do, I think, is I'm just going to go around and fill up a few of these little gaps with that spray foam. Now, it is expanding, so I don't want it to put too much. It's okay to put too much because we can come back and um, shave it down later. No big deal. Do not get this on your hands. I've got it on my hands. You should probably be wearing gloves when you do this. Otherwise, you are in for a nasty surprise. It doesn't like to come off. This is an expanding type as well, so I don't want to be too generous with it. And when applying it, you definitely want to overfill it to an extent. Uh, a lot of the times, if you don't put enough, you got to come back and do it again. So I like to do it until it starts to squeeze out. So I actually have something to shave down and make even. Imagine, it, you know, kind of picture it like wood filler where you do kind of want to use some. Um, I also went around along the whole thing here, uh, which will kind of carve around. And I just want it, I don't want it to look too uniform is all. 
Now, the next thing, obviously, I mentioned uh, I wanted to take a few more of these spare blocks and pieces and kind of build up the edges and whatnot. But I think what I'm first going to do instead is, ooh, there's another little crack here. Let's fill that crack up. Just a little baby one. Anyways, like I said, what I think I first want to do is just get a nice base on here. Something to attach everything to, something to draw what I wear, how I want my rocks and whatnot. Uh, and then, of course, we can start carving and moving forward. Once we start carving, the process after that is relatively quick. Of course, once we add up some more layers, we'll have to wait a little while. But what I want to do here is put on this. Maybe I'll do some carving in a day or two. Uh, and all the other layers that I'm going to add in, I'm going to carve them first and then add them to the background. Now, again, we have one and a half inch thick to work with here. And if we add in just one more layer uh, in certain areas, then we would have three inches total. We add two or uh, three or four layers. We could have up to, you know, six inches of rock looking pretty realistic. But this is me revealing a pretty big project for the first time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is the type of thing that would definitely take me you know, a week to complete, 20 to 40 hours of work type of deal. But uh, I think you guys bringing you along for the entire process does two things. One, of course, I don't need to worry about editing one giant video into a five or 10 minute video that you guys will enjoy. I can bring you along for every step. But with that comes the fact that none of these projects are beginning to end perfectly perfect. I might have got the wrong color or maybe it doesn't look good or maybe I got to make some big alterations and changes but this is the things that I want to show you is the real deal of what actually goes on in the hobby and it's not picture perfect every time. Secondly of course my selfishness I want your feedback. What do you guys think so far? What would you have done and are you surprised inspired or are you looking at your aquariums now or looking at your stands now thinking maybe I should wrap it too? Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are. I know that it's been about a year and a half or a year since I said I wanted to do something like this. And of course, just a few weeks ago, I had mentioned that something different or big is coming. I don't remember what I said, but it was a few weeks ago about the 2000 gallon aquarium. I hope the wait is going to be worth it. So much pressure on me. So if you're excited about this project and you want to see more, make sure that you're subscribed. If you're not already, make sure the notification bell is turned on so you're actually getting notified about my videos. One of the most popular comments in the comment section is, I didn't get a notification. I don't know what's going on with YouTube, but make sure that you are set up to be notified, check back every day, so you don't miss the end result. Or if you're like me and you can't, uh, you, and it's too much pressure, too much, uh, too much anticipation, come back in a week or two and it'll be done.